People from Togo's second largest city, Sokode, are returning home after days of being on the run from government forces. They left behind their homes and their businesses after clashes with police left four dead and dozens injured. It's been six days now that we've not worked, since Tuesday. There was nothing to eat except gari, and we had to manage with a bowl of rice. We're now fed up. It is time for us to have change in this country. Sokode is traditionally a pro-government city, but President Forna Simbe's crackdown has turned even his staunchest supporters against him. Protests erupted in August, calling for an end to Africa's longest ruling dynasty. Nasimbe took power in 2005 after the death of his father, who ruled since 1967. The government tried to control the spiraling crisis by limiting protests to weekends and even cutting the internet. The opposition refused to cancel protests, and government forces broke up demonstrations, shooting at protesters and arresting dozens. Many say constant police brutality and intimidation tactics by the government forced them to flee. <laughs> It was in the evening, and there was a lot of noise. There was a huge crowd on the streets, and we did not know that there were soldiers behind us. I was running home. They followed me, caught me, and beat me. I was able to escape, but one of them shot me in the leg twice. The government denies using excess force, and Togo's Minister of Security says police are responding to armed protesters. At the hospital in Bay, and some of you have already been informed, one person died by gunshot and three were wounded. Where did people get shot and by whom? Security forces are not the only ones who have these weapons. The United States has called on Togo to uphold its citizens' human rights and is asking both sides to solve the dispute peacefully. But as discontent with Nasimbe's government continues to grow, it seems unlikely that either side is willing to back down. Mohamed Al-Bardisi, Al Jazeera, 